Hey, 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 guys, Alex Avise Pelzer here, your voice manager at Unmute, the voice of women who are ready to speak up about what has kept her silent for way too long. Thank you for joining us for this series where we are highlighting the women who are doing some phenomenal things. Listen, we are not only becoming leaders, but creating leaders, which is super significant when I tell you who my guest is for today. Guys, this has been amazing. If you have not done so, make sure that you're going and checking out the replays, share it out. Let us know how it is resonating with you by leaving us a review on your favorite podcasting platform, because guess what, guys? This is all about you. It's all for you. Okay, I won't do that to y'all today, but I definitely am excited. And so, Shamika, how are you, sis? Hey, Alto Bees. I am super excited on tonight, even to just be in this space with you, because I feel that you are an amazing woman who are creating amazing avenues and platforms just for for women to just unmute their voice like I love that you said I help the woman unmute I'm like yes I'm like I'm opening my mouth I'm gonna talk I'm gonna say something and we're gonna rock and roll and have a good time to just help the next woman to like really really just walk in who she is so I'm excited Oh my goodness. And so Shamika, I love what she does when she it comes to, listen, women who lead. And I know that when we think about the history of women, women, when it comes to leadership, have always had these glass ceilings. We've had these boxes that we've kind of been fit into. And when I think about what it really means to be a woman that leads is there's some transparency, there's some humility, there's some things that really stand out. And so Shamika, I watched her do a conference after giving birth to a child, like not like the child wasn't six months, a year, no, 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 like a few days, guys. Now we'll get into that, you know, whole conversation a little bit later. But when we think about leadership, leadership is somebody saying it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be done because there's somebody out there that needs us. So with that being said, Shamika, tell them a little bit about yourself, and then we're going to dive into this topic. Well, hey, everybody. I am Dr. Shamika Latte. Come on, let's let's celebrate our wins for just a second. Yes, and you know, congrats. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you. You know, I really have to get used to saying that um, out to these because I'm I'm not about titles. And then I'm like, I gotta take this title and somebody's like, you gotta use it and you gotta sign with this. I'm like, for real? Because literally I, I just want to help the next woman win. And I really believe that helping her win is about living that winning story that winning story that takes crying, crawling, screaming, throwing your head back, calling out to be something like, girl, I need you. This is hard right here. But at the same time, it's like, if I don't live this, I can't help her build her bridge, right? And so I'm all about helping the woman who lead get to the root of her issues, right? Build, help her to get make this roadmap, create this roadmap by getting to the root of her issues to help her to be healed and successful mentally, spiritually, physically, financially, and emotionally, because we are truly multi-dimensional women, okay? So that she can build her business and her personal brand. And here is what I like to say that maybe gives me my core competence or give me the strength that I need and help me to be defined outside of all these amazing women who are doing amazing things for the next woman is really to do it for God's glory. Like, I feel like everything that we do, we can give it right back to God and give him glory because I feel like that's our divine purpose is to be here and to live out what he gives us. And so I really help the woman to do that and to do it co with confidence, with confidence. Girl, build yourself up. You can do it. You can fight. You can win. It's going to take some tears. It's going to take some cries some days, but you can do it. So that's literally what I do and literally the push that I give that woman. So what? She can maximize everything that she is, her voice, her story, her being in this marketplace. Oh my goodness. And so, you know what, that's a great place to start because when we think about maximizing 
who we are, it, it, there's a starting point where we have to understand who we are. We have to get to that point of saying, okay, these are the titles I hold. These are some labels that are attached to me, but this is who I actually am. And, and I love that distinction and separation between them because there's sometimes, there's some labels that we kind of hold on to that we need to get, let go of. There's some titles that we hold on to that we need to let mm -hmm. go of. But then when it comes to who we really are, let's be honest, a lot of times we don't even know. And so that is- Yes, so we are always- Yes, that's so true, Alta V. You know, we are always discovering ourselves and we have to give ourselves the opportunity to discover the new us, like always renewing our minds. Like in business, we give ourselves to rebrand ourselves, right? But in our personal life, we never give ourselves to rebrand, to grow, to think differently, to be the different person than Shamika was last year. Like this year, I'm different. I can't say who I was last year because I've learned too much. So I have to grow and we have to give ourselves the opportunity to grow. And I think that that's the hardest thing because we don't want to feel phony that we've changed. You know, when you got to leave the friends behind, when you got to leave family behind, when you got to leave the boo behind because you have matured so much, <laughs> girl, when you have matured so much that you have to grow to where you're going and whoever can grow with you can go with you and so you know I'm like yes we have to give ourselves permission to just trust our journey trust who we are and be okay with that and stop worrying about who judging us you know that's I think that's one of the most difficult things just as you know just trying to build ourselves build our businesses you know build our personal brand and grow away from friends we always feel like what do they think you know somebody what does some, somebody else's approval about me and I'm telling you that was a struggle for me too but you know as leaders we have to be like hey that's facts I feel this way but the truth is I got somewhere I gotta go Ooh, now I want to ask this question. Where did this core value from Shamika come from? Because girl, you are a powerhouse. And every time I've seen you show up, you show up with this authority and you show up with this, this confidence, this boldness every single time. And I'm like, man, I know that she got probably got a ton of things going on behind the scenes, but she's able to not only show up authentic, but she still has this boldness. Where did that come from for you? Girl, from what I told you in the beginning, crying, screaming, and let me tell you, praying, literally, you know, there, I believe that there's some things in us that's innate. We are born with it. And I've learned to be unapologetic about it. I had to, see, that's the thing. I had to learn to be unapologetic for what God gave me, which is my strength. And then the places where I am weak, I run to those who hold a strength in that. And here was me being a young woman, so thirsty and ready to get built and ready to build my business. And I would talk to women who had businesses. I mean, that had more money than I probably was making, <laughs> you know, at the time. And I'm laughing because it did hurt. But my laughter is like a rejoicing because now I see what God was doing in me then. Like there was some people who was just getting me to the hump they weren't getting me over it they were giving me just enough information that they felt comfortable with giving or maybe it was just that's all that they could give I felt that they can give me more because I saw more in them you know and I wanted the information and it hurt me it hurt me but you know when you have a passion on the inside of you you literally even though you hurt you're hurting it's still something like a driving force within you that says, I have to get this. And instead of me crumbling, I gave myself permission to cry when I didn't even know I was giving myself permission to cry. But in, that, in, that, in those moments of giving myself permission to cry, I realized I was giving myself permission to heal too. I was giving myself permission in the midst of the pain to also know what it takes 
to to really thrive and to really strive because adversity will always be up against us. We know that somebody might like you. They might not like you. Somebody might not be educated. You might live in a household with somebody who don't have it all. They only can give you what they can give you. But here's the thing that I realized out to be in all of this um, from being younger that gave me this confidence was one I began to realize is that God did not want anybody to put their stamp of approval on me. So he only allowed them to get me halfway there because he had to know if I really wanted it, will I work for it? Remember, I said, we do this thing for God's glory. God had to teach me if you're going to do this thing when I didn't even know I was doing it for his glory. You got to trust me. You got to come to me and pray. You got to come to me and get my wisdom. I got to give you the download. She can't give you everything because that other person has another assignment. Please, we cannot, buy, you know, like some submerge people in our own water, drown them because we're trying to swim. We're killing them. It's like, no, that's still my child too. Anyway, girl, so I had to learn this. And with this, you know, even in, you know, I would have moments where I would get into my Bible and I would read it. It's like a guy will always direct me to scriptures. And I'd be like, it'd be those scriptures that hit home, like, you got to work, you got to train, you got to fast, you got to, I'm like, so I be, I was almost like my own coach. I didn't know that God was developing me, developing all of these things in me to now be that for somebody else. And so I had to learn to trust God, have faith, which I equated to confidence. The more I built up my faith, the more I had confidence. And let me tell you, it's a training. Because some days, as great as I think that I am, as amazing and as wise that I think that I am, I still have my days where I'm struggling. And so in training myself and keeping my confidence or building back up my confidence, I just start putting principles in place and just like, you got to do this. You got to go. Come on, God. We got this. You got me here. So I'm doing self-talks all the time. And it's not easy child I have five babies now never thought how to be never thought like I've said it when I was young I'm gonna have five kids I'm gonna have seven kids the reality is or and the reality was and it still is <laughs> that even before I had children I was like I got to know me and I was like I'm fine by myself I didn't even want children anymore I didn't even want a relationship I was so good with me girl and then that's when it happened. Right when I got good with me, God was like, you're ready. And he, he, he sped up the process, you know? And so I'm like, okay, I see God, what you were doing in me. And it's a constant reminder to walk in this confidence. Like I wasn't just crying a second ago, you know, like I love just telling women that too, because you got to cry sometimes. It's human. You, 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 because pain hurts. <laughs> Disappointment mm -hmm. hurts. Not knowing your why hurts. Not knowing what the next move is going to be is frustrating. It's a part of the process. You're going to get up or you in this thing to win. And I keep saying Isaiah 66 says, and I know this ain't church, but I am the church. We are the church. And the reminder I told God in Isaiah 66, you know, the, the word of God says, he said, um, heaven is my throne. Earth is my footstool. Who will build this house for me? And I remind myself every time when my confidence feels low, I told God, I will build this house for him. And so if I'm building it for him, I have to believe and remember that he gave me everything to do this. And so that's what that confidence it comes from. It comes from a mixture. It's not one thing. It's a whole pot being cooked and that water being warmed up over and over again to let off that steam, which gives me my, gives me my power, gives me my confidence. <laughs> now, Shamika, you know, I cannot let you go on with this story until you give them, because you just gave a whole word and then you kind of threw it in there. You didn't, you didn't hover over it. You so threw it in there that you had gotten to a point where you said, I'm okay with me. And then 
God spread up the process. Can can uh, we're we not gonna skirt past that? Because I know somebody, th- a couple speakeasy podcast listeners, their ears perked up. Like, wait, 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 wait. What, what, what? What, what she say? Because, because, because I'm single. Wait, what happened? I I need to do what? What was the what was what? What she say? What was the ingredients? What was the recipe? And so, <laughs> speak to that because you are happily ma- happily married. Yes, happily married, and you do have five amazing kids. And so, you know, speak to that that transition point because we have so many women who are single at this point who are saying, "Okay, I'm I'm trying to do business. I'm trying to do home. I may have children. I may not have children, but." you know what? At this point, I'm good. I don't even know if I want a relationship anymore. Yes. I think, thank you for mentioning that. I kind of figure I'm like, yeah, that's that part right there. And I'm, I'm always so ready to talk about it because we do have to get to that place where we're just good with ourselves. And for me, this happened somewhere about 2005, 2006. I literally felt like I was standing in the middle of the street in the middle of the world when I made this decision. And so being good with yourself, I wanna first say that it's a decision. It's a choice, right? One of the greatest things I feel that God gives us, I'm so much in agreement with it. Miles Monroe said it first and I'm like, that is it, is a will. We have a will, a free will to make a choice, right? And so I was in these relationships with, Amazing guys, right? Amazing. Let me give credit where credit's through. It wasn't, it wasn't super terrible, but it wasn't God's best for me. And I realized it wasn't God's best for me because there was things that I wanted that wasn't getting produced out of the relationship. And I had some checkoff lists that wasn't being met. Not that I didn't have giggles and good times and not that they weren't attractive and had good money. I mean, but I was just like, I just didn't want nobody to be able to take care of me financially. I didn't just want to say, oh, we have a couple of houses and we have a couple of cars. I needed something for my heart. I needed something that was going to, somebody that was going to be able to build this greatness in me too, that was going to help cultivate what God placed in me. And I was not getting that. And I was tired of the relationships. You know, you, you're breaking up with this person and you're with this person. And so I was standing in the midst of the world and I said, God, I don't want it anymore. I said, God, what? What, whoever ever touched me, whoever I ever slept with, yes, slept with. I know that's a little touchy right there, but we got to be so honest and so real with God and so real with ourselves of our own insecurities, of our own skeletons, of our own dreams and desires. I was like, God, take it all. And I even told God, take all of the guys away. I'm giving them up. Take, I told God, take my dreams away I was done I was at that point I was done and it was it was a confidence that was built up in me I wasn't crying at the point like because I was no longer afraid not to have anything I was like if God gave me this life he knows what to do with it obviously because my choices aren't working and I was just like Lord wipe me clean my desires and then I began to tell God what he was going to do (gasps) oh Take a deep breath. I know I probably got somebody right there, but here's the thing. And I realized that I was like, oh, if if I tell this story, somebody's like, you told God? Well, hey, when we talk to him, we tell him things, right? But I told God, I was like, God, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do that. And you're gonna do this. I told God, I'm gonna get my degree. I was um, in the process of finishing my bachelor's degree and now about to enter into working on my master's degree. And then I was like, you know, I'm going to buy my own home. I'm going to do this. In the process, Altavis, I was living with a friend who was married with their four kids. And I was sleeping on the couch with their dog, Spirit, and their cat, Glory, 
Okay, so me and Spirit was on a me and uh, Spirit was on a couch, sleeping, sharing a couch together. So in this process, as my request was made known to God, I told God that I, what I was going to do. I was single for four and a half years. I mean, my family started calling. I mean, I had a cousin who started calling me gay. Mika must be gay. She doesn't bring anyone around. My family's like she doesn't really spend time. But I was so focused. I didn't really care what they said. I needed God and I needed for what I had petitioned to God and told God that I was going to do the work. It became a normal life for me. It became good. And then in 2008, I'm dancing with my, with my praise dance garments and I, we talking about weapons of warfare and my pastor comes over. Nobody knew what I was doing. I didn't let anybody know my prayer to God. He came over. Out of these, he took my weapons of warfare out of my hand, which is like a flag. We're praise dancing at church. He throws it down on the floor. I'm like, what are you doing? You know, we don't do this in a praise dance ministry. Anyway, he threw it down. Mind you, his daughters was coming to me. You need a man. You need this. You need to be with somebody. You ain't going to find them in this church. You need every, for years, years they were coming to me. Four and a half years, single, minding my own business, feeling good. And then 2008, at that day in church, he was just like thousands, we had thousands of members. He said, God has been seeing, God wants me to let you know, he has been seeing what you have been doing and your boat ass is on the way. How come the whole church got up and started shouting and start, you know, I'm like, oh, I, you know, I already know this, you know, because me, me and Jesus has been talking. And so out to these, I said, I said, I need to give a little emotion about this. And guess what? I still have the picture. And from time to time, I post it on, you know, Facebook or, or post it on Instagram. And um, God sent him the next year. My husband came. We were around each other for about four months before we even saw each other. I was working for the same guy who was his friend and my cousin who left Kansas and came to Chicago because I'm a Chicagoan, you know, I'm from, uh, I'm a native of Chicago, came to Indiana, which is a sister state of, um, sister state of Chicago, of Illinois. He ended up moving, my, one of my best cousins ended up moving to Indiana to the same church where my husband was at and God was sending me to this church every Saturday. Every Saturday, and I was full time in my ministry, but he was giving me a glimpse of my blessing. Let me tell you, the story is less than no time. The first time I talked to my husband on the phone, I, and he wasn't my husband at the time, of course, I was like, I just wanted to let you know that I love you. And he was like, I love you too. First time I ever talked to him. And I, I was you, you're trying to be crying on this episode. Jesus. Girl, I don't know if I'm saying too much, but I'm letting them know that something had happened. Something happens when you give it all over to God. Something shifts when you make it up in your mind that you're going to stop settling for less. Now, this is not only for if you want a relationship with, you know, uh, with a partner, but a relationship even with people. You have to make up your mind that this is who I am. I accept me for who I am and I'm good with me. And so you can build your business and you can build your personal brand that same way because the principles of God don't change. They don't change. And so here I was, next thing you know, less than eight months later, I'm getting married. I'm getting married. And then God set up the pace. We've been married 10 years, but my daughter makes 10 in our 10th year, you know, and then after that, we got kids and everything. I used to pray. I said, God, if you send my husband, fine. If you don't, and then God would like put things in my heart to pray for my husband, literally pray for his finances. I'm like, God, I don't know who this man is who you're sending. That's why I used to pray. But Lord, I hope I pray for his finances. I pray for his relationships. You know, I pray in everything that I prayed for. When I got my husband, that was every problem he had. Baby, we had he had tickets from 16 years old. He had, but I was ready because I made myself ready for God before I made myself ready for a man. Y'all got to hear me. This would be a whole episode within itself and definitely a story that I want to share with women. And that's God just giving me that story, right? Making sure that I stay unmuted 
and begin to tell this to unmute some things like you say out to these. I'm not going to coin your coin, okay? But I'm going to give you credit right now because it is so important that in so many areas of our lives that we stay unmuted. And I encourage the women who's listening to this today, you build your business just like you build you. Your business, you are your brand. You are your brand. And how you serve yourself in your personal life, in your home, is how you will serve yourself in your business. And if you do it right, you will see growth. You will see development. You will see your power. You will own your confidence. Oh, girl, let me tell you, I am literally, I told my husband when I met him, I said, I know who I am and you know who I am, but let me be human enough to cry. Don't, and this was before any titles, any things, you know why the titles are there. I said this to my women who lead when, and, and you're, you're a women who lead connect on, on the Facebook group, shameless plug, <laughs> but you're in there. <laughs> But the thing is, I told them, I was like, don't look at these titles. I said, only reason why I have the titles because I had to cry. Only reason why, you know, I it looks good at some of the things that I'm doing now is because it took me going through. You know, that trials and tribulations come to make you strong. That's some real stuff. And it ain't cute. But when you do it, and you find out and you get that understanding out of these that, oh, that's why I had to go through that. It's like, man, and then now you got another story to tell. Now you got another level to grow. Now you got more people to impact. So that's powerful. Girl, I'm going to be quiet right here, but I hope y'all got that, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> you just broke some, you just broke some things off of some people with this episode, like, because yeah, there are women who right now they're going through and they're like, you know what? I'm done. I'm, I'm over it. Uh, you can, you can have it. Uh, that's cute. Ha ha. No, thank you. And you, you kind of get to that point where, yeah, you're like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to work with what I got and we're going to keep it moving. And then you have those other ones that are just like, well, I'm just going to take whatever comes my way because I'm at this point of, you know, oh, I've been waiting for so long and I, I've been there, you know, I've been there where I, yeah, I took what was there and man, it almost took me out. You better, <laughs> you better be careful. You better be careful because it almost took me out. And when I think about it, it was crazy because at the time God was putting me on this path to create what I'm doing now, create the, the podcast, create the blog, create the business, um, write the books and publish the books. And the person that I settled for, y'all better hear this and y'all shine na the person that I settled for, it rubbed them the wrong way. Mm. It rubbed them the wrong way. And so a, a spirit of jealousy rose up in them. And man, their whole demeanor, they went from being such an amazing man and, and calling and praying with, you know, being on prayer calls in the morning with me and my children and all types of things to saying all types of stuff. And I was like, oh, <laughs> oh, oh, wow. And, and so I've been there and it's unfortunately, it's not a conversation that we have as entrepreneurs because we're like, oh, we got to take the personal out of it. But if you don't, if you don't understand that there's no taking them away from each other, at some point they bleed into each other and they affect each other. They affect and infect each other. And so there's no way around it. So yeah, you, you have to be open and honest with yourself about the, what, what you want and what you're doing in your relationships. Yeah, some of y'all, now this, again, I, we didn't went a whole other direction with this episode. Some of y'all, the relationships that you have romantically, business relationships, friendships are poisoning your purpose. Mm. You better say that out to these, it's poisoning your purpose. Yes, there's a lot of things that's actually holding us back from really tapping into, you know, the, the level that we supposed to be operating in our purpose. Yeah, it's, it's, it's hindering our growth. 
and we think that it's working for us, but it's holding us back. Even your, our brain is like waiting for something good to, to just drop in that space that you're wasting those thoughts on someone else. There's this, um, there's this lady, her name is Dr. Um, Caroline Leaf. I don't know if you um, ever heard of her, but she is a um, former um, brain scientist or former neuroscientist, if we should say. And um, she, 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 does the, she um, does the study of the brain and she's talking about how the brain has branches like a tree. And when we look at our, our memory and our thought processes, bad thoughts creates these branches that's very terrible, you know, very, and it's, it's, you know, and then it takes a lot, one bad thought. It literally almost take up to, if we do seven times seven, you know, maybe about 64 days to really destroy a brain thought, bad habits and, you know, all these, you know, things and like that. And if we're feeding ourselves the wrong thing, we're not leaving space enough in our brain, <laughs> literally. And I, I want to talk about that because it's literally mental. It's all these mental things and these thoughts that we have and what we feel like we should have and who we should be with and it's it's so tiring it's so exhausting mentally and if we don't feed ourselves the proper thing the proper people be around the people that's going to give us these good branches that's what I'm getting to these good thought process that's going to be there that allows us when we begin to think that in our subconscious when it brings up these things through our consciousness we're like oh okay I need to make this great move I need to make this move instead of what's happening when we're practicing wrong things and being around wrong people out to these what it does is it brings us these past thoughts and we're like why do I feel that way I'm hurting we become negative natty you know we become what is that? Um, <laughs> oh, I mean, I can think of all type of things. Yeah, we, we are improperly using one of the greatest things that we have, which is our mind. And when whatever we think, we end up taking action to it if we believe it. You know, when we believe that I can't have better, we end up either acting it out. We end up even talking about it it becomes the next social media post and I know like you said out to beast we didn't win to a whole nother side but I love this conversation so much because a lot of times we do not get this space to release we have so many facades that's up and this is a place that myself um talk to many of my members about many of the women who lead about you need this because they have the space to create sometimes but it's 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 muted it's muted because of what they are not allowing to unmute you hear what i'm saying i'm hurting i just had an argument with my husband last night my mother won't watch my kids. I didn't get in no sleep. Or I just got into a fight with such and such. I got a black eye. I can't come on social media. <laughs> you know, what do you do? Like literally all of these things. And we want people to see differently. But we need this community. We need a community of women who will say, I understand. And without the judgment being there. So that we can know how to be on top and have a bridge, but also have a maintenance station. And that's what I say, we are the next woman's, we're, we're her maintenance station. You know, we're, we're, we're right beside the, we're bridge builders and we understand. So we need these communities like this. We need these podcasts, speak easy, to speak free and to flow and to get some answers that's literally going, literally going to build us. So just in short, I just, thank you, you know, for this, that somebody is going to hear this and their life is going to change, realizing that you're not in this thing by yourself. Like you got some people who know, who's been building some bridges, who then went through some stuff, but knows a little bit more of how to keep your bridge, how to keep your life and your sanity, you know, from crashing and burning. 
Mic drop moment. Speak easy listeners. I hope you took notes. Some of you may be going and trying to find the tissues right now. You you going through your phone and deleting some contacts. I understand. I get it. I want you to let us know how this episode resonated with you. Simply because, again, we do it all for you. This is so you can elevate in life and business. This is so you can learn more about yourself as an individual, learn more about business, so that way you can be successful. But ultimately, this is why I bring the the guests on that come on, is because they have a story that is going to impact your life and most of them you can relate to. Like you've been through some of the things that they talk about. You've endured some of the things they've endured. And, and it's, it's great to be able to see an example that I can go and say, wow, if they were able to do it, then I can do it too. So with that being said, Dr. Shamika, I want you to let them know how they can reach out to you, how they can get more information about women who lead and how they can find you out, um, online. Yes, yes, yes. On all of these platforms, you can definitely find me at I am Shamika Latte. I just wanted to make it real nice and easy for you. <laughs> so whether it's on Facebook, Instagram, Clubhouse, my website is all I am Shamika Latte. Literally, I A M S H A M E C A L A T A I dot com. Okay, or take the dot com off of it if it's not a website. Women Who Lead Connect, you know, I created that to literally help the woman who lead build her bridge in her business and her personal brand so that she does not have to do this thing alone. So, I mean, it's every aspect, whether she's trying to find Um, just someone she can connect to, get some support. We got a prayer room. We got a mental room, a physical room. Get your whole life in shape room. Um, And then just really creating those stages, platforms, and opportunities for the woman who lead so that she can do what you say, unmute that voice, but so that she can tell her story, you know, so that she can get her brand out there. I want it to be, you know, that train that helps, put her on the track so that people can see, you know, who she is and give that opportunity for those who are, will not and are not opening up platforms or opportunities, you know? So, you know, I'm all of that. One of the things I say out to be is that I had to become the woman I always needed to help the next woman become who she wants to be, who she wants to become. And so if anybody wants to be you know on um in women who lead connect we have went global you know we just started out to beast but we we went global because we started getting those who are out of the country i'm like they're signing up for membership yes 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 so my goal is to one day i'm i said i'm gonna give i'm gonna give some room for some other people but to be one of the top five professional women organizations uh, for women, um, women who are leading. So that's my goal, but that's women who lead connect.com. It's just as simple as that. So yes, that is my information. We have so many things to help any woman, whether she's starting off or whether she's like in her game, you know, that's, that's everything that we have for them. So I'm super excited about that. Thank you so much for having me here. I appreciate you saying yes to being a guest, girl. I was like, oh, I know your story. So I knew that this was definitely going to be a, a opportune moment. And I, I really feel like I, I'm somebody who consistently is like, you know what, give, give people their flowers, celebrate them for what it is that they do, who they are. And, you know, I, I want to make sure that I'm consistent in doing that. And so when I said, okay, you know, for the month of March, that's all we're going to do. We're just going to celebrate women all month long. Not to say that we don't love you guys, because listen, fellas, y'all know Father's Day all month long. I do a special series just for you. Don't get, don't get in your feelings. But you may have a mother, sister, aunt, daughter, okay, cousin that may need this motivation that we're, you know, putting out during this month, send them an episode, you know, tell them, you know, her, this person's story, you know, sounds pretty like, you know, sounds like your story. I I wanted you to listen to this. That is the kind of thing that we love to see and hear because it allows us to know that 
what we're doing is not in vain. Guys, this has been a phenomenal episode, one of my top, uh, and I'm excited about doing this. Each and every time I get to show up and open up the space for other women, this has been amazing. I'm looking forward to some phenomenal feedback from this one. And guys, listen, without you, there's no podcast. So we want to hear from you. Until next time, guys, don't forget to press it out. See ya.